who will begin reading from verse 1 to verse 8. I am in John chapter 5 now. If you are there, say amen. If you are not there, so wait for me. Okay, the amen are. After this day was the feast of the Jews, and Jesus went to Jerusalem. There is at Jerusalem by the ship market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Batista, having five porches. A great multitude of important folks, or blind, half withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. The second man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he has been now a long time in this case, he said unto him, Without being made whole. The important man answered him, Sir, man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. He said unto him, Rise, take up the bed, and walk. Hallelujah. Jesus said to him, Rise, that bed, and walk. Now, this scripture of hidden truth in it. A lot of hidden truth in it. That differentiates between law. That differentiates between the old system and the new system. The old system is the ways of Moses. The new is the life giving spirit. Hallelujah. Now, when you read from verse 1 of chapter 5 of John Gospel, it sounds interesting. I, I hope sometimes ago, some, some couple of years ago, I was wondering why. Okay, everything. Everything was translated in the English. Why did they not translate the word Batista into English and they left it like that? So that's just simply said, um, it, it, it's called the house of mercy. Right? We so just simply said it's called the house of mercy. So they just read, in a place called the House of Mercy. There were many porches there. Okay? Five porches. And around these five porches, um, uh, there are many sick people. They would not have left the world baptized. Now, I believe they left it because really, the Jews, they did not speak Greek. It was later, they now translated the um, the Hebrew language of that time they translated into Greek for us. Amen. But they actually spoke Hebrew. That's why it was left in the Hebrew form. Baptist. I believe that. I believe that a lot. Hallelujah. Now the word Baptist, the the bath is house. Testa is and see, which also came from another word, and not grace. So you can either say the house of mercy or the house of grace. Hallelujah. So in the house of grace, there were a lot of sick people there. The Bible said, the man has been there for 38 years. 38 years. Under the law, 
under the law, it is stated by Moses that you don't, you don't punish a man by whipping, that's flogging the man. The highest you can punish a man by flogging publicly is 38 times. Hallelujah. 38 times. If the, if the penalty is so grievous, you flog the man 39 times. You never, ever flog a man that you want to reconcile back to the fold 40 stripes. Because when you flog, according to the Old Testament, when you flog 40 times, you actually disgrace and excommunicate the man away from the fold. The man's dignity is completely gone, his disgrace is removed forever. Hallelujah. So, under the law, you are required to be punished maximum 39 times. So this man has been there for the full number of the law, 38 years. The period of punishment of the law. That's the reason why the word Baptista was not translated. Because it was a full, it was not time for grace to be fulfilled in the life of this man. So, Jesus walking to the ship full. The Bible said, what we just read now said, there were plenty, plenty. But I don't think anyone has fulfilled a come to the number of fulfillment. Can I get you on the microphone, please, quickly? Has come to the number of fulfillment. Has come to the number of fulfillment of the law. And Jesus went specifically to this man that has completed the number required for the law to be fulfilled. He has been there for 38 years. And told them, now you've been here for 38 years. Are you ready to get out of the system of the law? Into the system of grace? And this man said, I don't, normal, normally, his answer is supposed to be yes. Normally. But because he was deep into law, into the condition of slavery, not sonship, he was deep into the condition of slavery, he still thought and reasoned as a slave. Instead of agreeing and just saying yes, he began to complain. Ah, no one, I don't have anybody. When the water is fed, when it's time to give an offering, when the offering has been given, I don't have anybody to take me there. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, Will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Talios El Talios Genomia Pugis Talio El Talio Genomia Pugis Will thou be made whole? And the next thing he said, nobody will take me home. What Jesus was asking him 
what Jesus was actually asking he said he said by my lifting you up you know I told you before that Talio came Talio has a root word that has another complicated root word called a row I remind then a row lift up by the chosen will of the Father. Jesus is saying, by my chosen will to help you, to lift you up. Hallelujah. Now, genomia, genomia means to bring into existence. He said, by my chosen will, I will lift you up from the law and bring you into the existence of grace and make you complete sound because because make sound to be complete without anything extra that can be added to you to make you complete he said to the man he said by my will by myself my special grace i'm going to take you from this place I will bring you into a perfect existence in grace that does not need any addition. And the next thing the man said, nobody to take me there. He said, I will take you there. By me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You know, I love the translation, the, the people that translated King James. I love, I love, I love. They want, they want you to stress your, your, your God-giving thoughts and prayers. Because will that be made whole? It sounds simple. Will that be made whole? But actually what Jesus is saying is, by my grace, by my will, I'm going to lift you from this place, this dead life that you're living. I'm going to bring you into an existence of a glorious life and make you complete and finish you. And finish you. And you'll be perfect. There will not be any scale or wrinkle blemish on you anymore. Your song and your sacrifices will go straight to heaven and you have life and life everlasting. Yeah. And the man said, no bother, Lord. No bother, Lord. Then he looked at the man and he said, rise. He said, rise. God is not interested in your complaint. God is interested in your ability to agree with the word that he has spoken. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, I'll say it again. God is not interested in your complaint. God is interested in your ability to receive the word that he has spoken to you. God's not interested in you being poor. God is interested in you accepting the fact that he became poor so that you can be rich. Right. Hallelujah. I'm heartbroken. I'm depressed. God's not interested in all of all that. He said, I will give you life by myself. Talios, Genos, Kugis. I will give you life by myself. I will exist you where existence was far from you and I'll make you sound. That's what God is interested in. He's interested in you accepting that fact, not being beaten under the law, that you are no good, you are stupid, you are, you are doomed. No, God is not interested in you being beaten under the law. God is interested in you staying in the house of mercy. Hallelujah. All the Lord does is to beat you and put you down. All grace does is to lift you up and put you in a place where you exist in glory. Come on, put your hands together with you. Hallelujah.
Amen. Do you know? The word Talio Zay Talio in the Hebrew is called Nasa. Talio Zay Talio is the Greek. The Hebrew uh, word for it is called Nasa. Nasa means to carry, to lift up. You know, when, when the Father God told Moses, he said, tell Aaron to bless the people. And he said, he said, tell them that I'll lift up my countenance on them. It means, it means, uh, uh, I will nasa. I will carry, I will carry them up. And my countenance will be lifted. When I raise them up, my countenance will be lifted unto them. That means he's lifting you up and raising his eyes to see when he lifts you up. That's why he said, he said, I'll carry them. So Jesus is saying to this man, Talios, Nasa, I'm carrying you up to an existence where my countenance will shine on you and you will forever live in grace. Remember, love broke the man down. He has come to the fulfillment of the law. And Romans, Romans 10, 4 says, he said, Jesus is the end of the law. At the end of the law is Jesus and is our righteousness. Glory to God. The word he used to say, I'll lift you up, is an interesting word. He it's said, it's a, nine, Jesus, verse nine, Jesus said unto him, rise, take up that bread, and, and walk. Rise, take up the bread, and walk. He grow, he grow, he grow. For those of us writing this, E G E I R O, Hebrew. It means it means to to be recalled from death. He didn't use he did not use Hebrew. He used Hebrew to be recalled from death. He said, okay. I'm telling you to get up, rise, and take up and go. You are still in the depth of the law. He said, now I will recall you from it. I will remove you from it. I will separate you from the depth of the law to the living grace of salvation. So he told the man, get up from law. Be established in grace and take the thing that has bound you, carry it, bind it, and carry it, and go. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will beat every circumstance of life, that you will increase in grace. That the troubles that have made you perpetually down is gone. Yeah. And you are now lifted by grace. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Yes, get up on my back and your back. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The God is good. All the, time. the power of grace. 